Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. So we are going to keep playing to get rid of the question mark, hopefully. And we are going to keep playing the E4 and hopefully, you know, get more check perk games to study more. Uh, I think that check perk is something that I somehow I just I'm just really interested in in, in to try to Explore more and put it as a weapon. Okay, we will have a check perk in In this game nice c3 and c6 is on the board Bishop to e2, okay, so this is a more modest approach to The check perk now. I don't know too much um, uh, About this I don't think because I haven't really looked. I, I've been just no. I the only thing I kind of know is that uh, this is the setup, and then most people play either f four or you know knight f three. Bishop e two is a definitely a very modest approach. But we, I think we want to start with knight b to d seven, uh, looking to play e five. Okay, we have bishop to e3. So I think we are going to just go for the plan, yeah? We are going e5. I think the plan here, since our opponent played bishop e3, I think we, and they haven't pushed the f pawn. Uh, we are going to just play. Okay, we have f4 on the board now. That is very surprising. I think since f4 is on the board, now we could play f takes e takes d4. Um, but I actually don't see any good reason why we should do that, because now. Once F, once f4 is played, queen, F, queen to a5 is actually a very powerful move uh, that we can play here. And what it does on top of pinning is that it adds a, adds a, uh, a defender to the e5 pawn. So I think we are going to, going to play queen a5. Uh, hey, we have queen d2 on the board. But now we actually don't have to care too much anymore uh, because because now we have enough defenders. But you might be wondering now what happens if knight to f3, right? Um, and fun fact, we actually still have more than more than enough defenders. Currently, there are only two attackers on the e5 pawn, and we actually have three defenders uh, on the e5 pawn. So even if knight f3 is play, I don't think that's going to propose anything too dangerous. Now, if we really want to be aggressive, we could start with b5. But I think I think that bishop e7 is sound uh purely because we want to have the option to castle, not that we will castle though. Uh keep that in mind. Okay, so we have bishop f3, which is a little bit of a weird move. Usually the knight just uh, deploys onto f3 instead of this instead of e2 in this case. Um, I think since bishop f3 is played, just adding defenders onto the e4 square, which I don't think is needed. Now the knight doesn't actually have any meaningful discovery because queen takes e2 is a check. So... For now, I think we are good to push b5. Uh, the problem with castling here is that we leave we uh, we leave the option for our opponent to castle queenside, which in the check perk, uh, castling queenside leads to a very combative uh, position. But most of the time, white is better because we are leaving. We don't have we don't really have space.
Okay. Wow, that's very... That's very weird. Okay, so it looks like our opponent wants to trade queens. I think there's no reason for us not to accept the trade, right? Queen takes d2. Bishop takes d2. And now we're safe the castle as the queens are off the board. Okay. Yeah, we can't just castle in this position. And now we have... In the check perk, if queens are off the board, usually, you know, usually black kind of just has a good time. And white is still better in this position because of uh, the big center that white has built. But the piece, the current, the pieces are currently a little bit awkward for white to deal with. Um, okay, we have knight h3, understandable. I think now we could play uh, bishop, just play bishop b7. I don't think, and I don't even think that's a bad move by any means. I think bishop b7 is fine, just, just developing. And I don't know where this, uh, this knight is going to go, to be honest. So let's play bishop b7. Knight to f2. Maybe knight g4 is an idea, or knight d3. Um, actually, knight d3 is probably an idea that I might have to care about. But now, since we th see knight d3 here, and we are, we finished developing all of our pieces, we can actually proceed to play rook e8. And what we're going to do is try to play bishop f8. Okay, so we have castles. I think... Uh, I think now is a good time to just play bishop f8. Here, rook, uh, rook e8, I think might actually blunder, have blundered something, although I'm not very sure. But g, uh, g4, I think we could play h6. And then g5, h6, pawn 6, and then knight to h7, and our e5 pawn is still fine. So I don't think that's really too crazy. Okay, our opponent finally takes, releasing all the tension, and f5 is on the board. Now, here's some changing in plans, right? Now, if we usually if we we're trying to put the bishop back to f8 because it has two options. One, it will go to g7, but the other one is that if by any chance this diagonal opens up, then the bishop will become very strong, and then, if we look at the fact that this bishop is currently on d2, we could play bishop c5, and now the bishop is no can no longer go to e3. That's something we can do. Now, since our opponent played f5, we do have to be a little bit aware that after bishop c5, g4 is coming, and currently the knight is doesn't have any square to go. So that is something that we need to be aware. However, I think after bishop g5, c5 and g4, we could just play knight to b6. And what knight b6 does is that it threatens um, knight to c4 and knight to a4. It, may, it, it will force white to respond and leave the and leave our knight to have a square to move. So I think we are going to play bishop c5 here. Okay, we have king h1 first. That's also a pretty pretty good move. But now, now we don't have to play knight b6. What the purpose of king h1 is that now knight d3 is playable, and we will actually want, might want to provoke it a little bit. Um, now we could we going to play rook a d8. If knight to d3, we are going to play bishop b6, and Starting the plan of going knight to c5 instead of knight b6. What knight b the drawback of knight to b6 is that it leaves our it doesn't leave the bishop in any square to drop back. And in that case, if our bishop gets uh, gets kicked, it will it will be it will be very awkward for this bishop because now it currently doesn't really have any good squares other than b6. Thank you. 
Okay. Oh. He went rook f to d1, but he forgot his knight is hanging. So we just pick up a free knight. I don't know why he he doesn't move this rook to, to the a rook to d1 instead of... Okay, so now g4 is actually on the board. We have a piece, so there's no rush that we need to do. But keep in mind that actually knight to c5 here might be a good, might be a decent move. Uh, because it adds an attacker into the e4 pawn, and white actually has to respond. And it seems like by going knight c5, it doesn't leaves our bishop uh, no square to go back on this diagonal. But there's actually the h4 square for ourselves to go. So I think I am... Although, actually... Yeah, I think I'm going to go knight c5. Now if our now if white goes knight c three, uh I think that we have we can just go b four and not really care about anything. B four and b after b four the knight actually has to drop back to e two, which which you know will cause um some sort of psychological damage because they just moved the knight and now they have to move it back to the exact same same place. Now this is probably going to be a free win. Because our opponent just randomly drop a piece for kind of no reason. I really hope that our opponent is not trying to leave the time right now because that'll be a. Well, then we're kind of just wasting three minutes here doing absolutely nothing. Um, but in the meantime, I think we could go go back and look at our 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 previous positions beforehand. So, usually in the check perk, if our opponent breaks the tension and take on d five, it's usually very good for us because if you look right, the bishop on f eight was uh, it was really bad. But now, after after the trade, a trade on e five, our bishop is now becoming very strong. Now, White could have played bishop e three and probably trying to prevent us, which we would still play bishop e c five, uh, and because of the power of the knight on d seven. But f five is a kind of a positional commitment, which I think it is inaccurate. I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but I think it is inaccurate because. Now that the center is close and the king side is also semi close, it allows black to play very well in the center, especially when there's a, uh, an open d file for, for black to play with. Uh, because after rook ad8, now rook ad1, rook ad1, we could just respond with knight to b6, or we take on, we could take on f2 and then play knight to c5, that is something we could do. Okay, so our opponent finally resigned. That's uh, good for us. Let's look at the game really quick. This is, you know, quite a short game, but I think it's still very helpful. So bishop e2. So bishop e2 is sort of a more uh, modest move, uh, and it is also a waiting move to see what black will do before committing to maybe f4 or knight f3. Now, if knight if knight three was play, I think we probably could play with some g four, uh, and that that would be the case, or or we could just play, you know, queen c seven, and that would be fine. But mostly bishop g four we play, and then this will be kind of the case here, where I don't know. I mean, it's a six, but 
probably is with E5 is fine. But anyways, that that will be for a different day. We will we will, we will uh, analyze it more extensively when we have a chance to have it on the board. Bishop E2, Knight BD7, and then Bishop E3. It why it's just allowing us to play E5 with you know no problem and we're gonna just play it. And F4 is on the board. And Queen A5 here is very important. Just keeping getting getting a pin here, I think. Yeah, so I I was right. So either Queen D three or Bishop D three protecting the pawn. Bishop F three is okay. Not not here, but Queen D two is okay. Then Bishop to E seven, and then Bishop to F three is just very very weird. Uh, putting the knight on E two is already not very good for White, purely because there's no reason to guard these two pawns. Rather than, you know, and this, rather than that, why is better off just putting a knight on f3 and pressuring e5? Because this is, this is very big tension on the center here. But after bishop f3, we just go with uh, b5. It's a knight b6. Knight b6. I guess this could be an option, threatening knight c4. But I, we just go with the more typical plan of the check for. It's this kind of pawn structure, right? Where we have we will have grab more space in in the, on the queen side while making sure that e five is well protected and always contesting on the center. If white were to play knight f three f three here, then we wouldn't be able to play b five because that just hangs a, a pawn. So and doesn't it actually hang a pawn? But Actually, it uh, kind of does. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, it does. It actually does hang upon. Knight g4, I don't think it's good, actually. Knight g4 is tricky, but that is e6, and now it looks a little bit, it looks really ugly. So, b5, it was not playable here. I think if knight, yeah, if knight f3, I probably would just castle here. And if, if long castle happens here, then. We can start taking. We can start trade first by trading, and then go to b5. We have to trade because once again, if we go b5, then we have to sacrifice a pawn. And sure, the engine stays equal, but it, but no one wants to really lose a pawn for no reason, right? You go here. Knight g4 is fine here, but again, after e6, you know it is not the most comfortable position to play. So after b5, knight g knight c to e2 is even more awkward because this is I don't know what what makes our opponent want to trade queens. Um but trading queens in in a check part just always help black helps black. And in fact in a lot of positions, trading queens just helps black get a very easy position to play. Alright. So bishop b2, which is castle, knight h3. Bishop b7, uh, and then just some developing moves. So castle is inaccurate, but it's fine. Bishop f8 is also inaccurate. Yeah, so this is what I said earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I need to talk about this. So rook f to e8, uh, I think it's sort of an inaccurate because of g4. Now, okay, now I was thinking about a6, but knight b, I should have saw, seen that knight, the knight b6 idea always works. And now this pawn, it kind of hangs, right? But it's not. It's also not really hanging, because let's say, let's say let's say you take, and you take, and if you take all the way, then you actually don't really lose the pawn, um, because this e5 pawn sooner or later will be captured. Why can't cannot keep this pawn for forever? So. And here I think it was slightly that g5 will be played, knight f7 and f5. In which case, well, we can just play f6 and we, then we're going to be to be fine. And this position without a queen is much less scary, uh, much less scary than uh, a typical a typical position on the board uh, with queens on the board. So bishop f8 here still allows g4. Uh, I, I was ready for a6 or even knight b6, 
and you know it's inaccurate, but the position is still pretty much fine for for black to play. I went bishop f8 because now now knight b6 is actually an idea. In this position, if g4 is play, I might not see that knight b6 is a good move. But here after but here after bishop f8, if g4 is play, now knight b6 is fine because I have to take six. Um, we can take back with the rook, but again, once again, we could go here, and now there's no e6 because we just grab the pawn with the rook, and we have a very active position. So now our opponent released the tension by taking on e5, and then he went f5, which is fine. But now we just go. Well, now we go bishop c5, which is not the most accurate move, but. It say here it likes really likes bishop to e7 or knight b6. I did I went again I went bishop c5 because I didn't want to allow bishop to e3. So knight b6, bishop e3. Okay, we have no run to knight c4. Let's say knight b6, b3 is play. Yeah. And bishop c5 here is still not very good. It wants bishop e7 still. And after bishop e3, apparently black is fine. But given the passive, given that the, now the black bishop is very passive, I don't know if I'd really like the, this position. I would rather this playing this and get, you know, get some put some pressure on on this diagonal. So, where was the c5? He should have played g4 right away, but he got scared. He got scared of the the pin. I mean, the pin is somewhat scary, but it's also but it's not that scary. Uh, I think, I think here if our opponents say play uh, a to d one, then we just play knight b six. Go with the plan, and if g four, well again once again knight to b six. If g five, we have knight f to d seven, and we are going to be fine. But king h one is play, and now we are pretty comfortable here. Rook a to d eight, and uh, uh you know our opponent just went rook f to d one instead of rook a d one, which makes no sense. When here, yeah. but if this happens, well, I just going to play knight b6 or something. B4 is a is a move, but I, I think knight b6 is good enough. Knight b6, b3, stopping knight c4, and you know the position is fine. And h6, g4, just take six. And now this bishop is very, you know, white has bishop pair, but the light square bishop is clearly not good. So. So yeah, I think uh, you know quite a short game, but give us some very good insight on the check perk, and you know we we can keep winning the check perk and, until we uh, start meeting actual actually good opponents, and hopefully I'll get more more of the main lines against the check perk. Uh, okay, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.